See, when I, when I moved to go, I was only seven years old then. Education was never really something that was highly important to my family. Mm -hmm. um, it was just more of, you have to go to school because this is what everyone does, right? But when we, we, you know, we came to the U.S., um, I just seen a whole different system of how students went to school, what they did there, and I, I think I fell in love with it because of the lack of education that I had before. I know I grew up in Warren, Michigan, and the school that I attended up until my freshman year was like pretty subpar for the most part. Mm -hmm. And then um, I made the decision to transfer. I asked my parents. My parents have always been super supportive of my academic endeavors, and they, they let me transfer to this other school. And it was going to the school where being smart and being high achieving and being involved in things was like very, it was held in a very high regard. Mm -hmm. and it was very respected. And like seeing that culture and how it was so different there, mm -hmm. like it fascinated me, but it also made me ask a lot of questions about mm -hmm. where I had grown up and like, I don't know, why there were so many disparities mm -hmm. in that. People from lower income communities, communities like mine, communities like yours, you know, that there's a reason that like high achieving people are a rarity. It's, mm -hmm. it's not coincidence, it's systemic. It's, mm -hmm. it's the way that we set them up to succeed. It's decades of history and policy that are at play in these communities that make it so difficult for them to get access to higher education. Yeah, I mean, I've, I've read some, some recent uh, articles that said that because Latino students or African American students kind of seem like they're not the best education-wise, they're undermatched, right? So they don't get matched to certain institutions where they would be able to succeed. Right. Whether that be, you know, a four-year institution, they'll go instead into a community college and instead of getting a, a four-year degree, they only get a two-year degree, right? And that's what stops them from continuing to create growth for these different people. Yeah, like the school that I switched out of, the school I attended my freshman year, had an entire cosmetology program, but like no AP classes. It's like, you expect us to take like this, this vocational route instead of like actually attend mm -hmm. these four-year institutions. Mm -hmm. And it's unfortunate. And the, the tricky thing is that it's, it's not deliberate. No one's deliberately preventing you from having exactly. access to higher education. It's systemic. It's these, these rules that we put in place, these decades of policy decisions and historical events that shape an area that make it so that the people in that area don't have access to higher education that they should have. And it doesn't seem like the actual system stopped you from getting there. It's, it makes it seem that it was the student or the person, yeah. whoever it was, that, that didn't make like it. You feel like you somehow did something that, that made it so that you didn't have that access, when in actuality, it's a, it's a series of factors. It's, yes, it's grit. Yes, it's, it's determination. Yes, it's character to some extent, but it's mm -hmm. also the environment you grow up in. It's, mm -hmm. it's the support system that you have. It's the, what the people around you do and where they go to school, if they go to school. Mm -hmm. it's, it's the school that you attend, the resources that you're given. It's the, the attitude that people have toward you growing up, telling you that you can succeed, that you can achieve these things. Right. It's all of that combined. Mm -hmm. There's no book that says, if you want to and you're this type of person and you have this profile, this is how you get to this. No, you have to fight and each single story is specifically different. You had to go through different things and I had to go through different things and another student who might be undocumented with a different situation or documented with a different situation, completely different story. In fact, we all have different identities, whether that be social class, cultural class, citizenship. You know, as an undocumented student, when I was in middle school, I was afraid of going out and being caught by the um, you know, border patrol because I was gonna get sent home back to Mexico, right? So it's these things that kind of, I don't know, it's you're living afraid sometimes because you have to be like everyone else yeah. or at least what the system makes you portray, right? It because makes you feel like you're not welcome, like you don't belong. Right, and it's also, also very triggering into places where you can't be who you are. Right. Lower income students who come to universities like U of M don't need to be remediated. They don't need to assimilate. They already have all these strengths and skills that can be used for really great things. Mm -hmm. And it's all about harnessing those skills and putting them to work at changing the system. It's your right to have an education. And for anyone to, to obstruct that, whether it be with policy, whether it be with, with uh, depriving you of resources, of 
blocking that path to higher education, I think that's a human rights issue. Mm -hmm.